Yellowstone supervolcano earthquakes reveal the volcanic system is six times bigger than we thought. This is by Robin Weil, PhD researcher in volcanology UCL. Seismologists have discovered a massive magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming that suggests its volcanic system could be more than 5.6 times larger than we previously thought. Although it was already known that Yellowstone had one magma reservoir located about 3 to 10 miles below the surface, that's 5 to 16 kilometers, 3 to 10 miles, the new study published in Science has revealed another much larger reservoir sitting directly below the first, located around 20 to 50 kilometers down, that's 12 to 30 miles down below the surface. This reservoir is thought to have a volume of around 46,000 cubic kilometers compared to a volume of around 10,000 cubic kilometers for the shallower reservoir. To make their discovery, scientists analyzed the vibrations made by earthquakes that pass beneath the volcano. The technique not only sheds light on this volcano's potentially life-threatening eruptions, but it could also help us understand other volcanoes such as the Calbuco, which is currently erupting in Chile. Yellowstone is a sleeping beauty. Yellowstone Volcano is composed of an immense volcanic crater known as the caldera, more than 70 kilometers or 44 miles in length, most of which lies within the Yellowstone National Park. The volcano rarely erupts lava as it did so about 70,000 years ago, and since then it's had another 80 eruptions. But the magma lying beneath the surface gives rise to spectacular geothermal features, such as the geysers and the colorful hot springs. The last large eruption at Yellowstone was 640,000 years ago. It was a super eruption, and it ejected around 1,000 cubic kilometers, that's 240 cubic miles, of volcanic material. This cataclysm created the Yellowstone caldera. To get an idea of the scale of this, the largest eruption in recorded history, Mount Tambora, in 1815, erupted about a sixth of that. Now, magma reservoirs are thought to occur beneath most volcanoes, and they play a crucial role in the dynamics of the eruptions, but they are too deep, and conditions within them are too extreme to be measured directly, so volcanologists have to infer information about them using other means, such as measuring seismic waves. These waves travel more slowly when they pass through the molten rock, and accordingly the group were able to use the velocities of the earthquakes, the waves, to infer the presence of large deep zone of partially molten material. The magma stored in the deeper reservoir probably does not cause eruptions at Yellowstone directly. Instead, it likely acts as a feeder for the smaller, shallower reservoir, which is the ultimate source of the volcano's catastrophic eruptions. Scientists have suspected the existence of a second magma reservoir at Yellowstone for some time, but this new evidence is among the strongest support for the theory to date. The discovery is of second magma reservoir, of this second reservoir may also help to explain a mysterious feature of the Yellowstone volcano, its carbon footprint. Carbon dioxide gas is commonplace at volcanoes. It's given off by the rising magma. But Yellowstone's output, which is around 445,000 tons of CO2 every day, 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every day, given off by Yellowstone, was too high to explain by a single magma reservoir. But according to the study's authors, the presence of this new reservoir is enough to account for the volcano's CO2 flux. If the high-resolution seismic imaging technique is used in the study, it could, it could be repeated at other volcanoes whose deep structure is poorly understood such as the Calbuco volcano in Chile, that means that volcanologists might eventually be able to understand how volcanic eruptions take place. The first stirrings of volcanic eruptions happened far below the surface. 
if researchers can emulate the findings at Yellowstone at other volcanoes, that can tell us, it can only tell us more about the risks they pose. This is on the conversation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.